Yeah. yeah. Just with pads on and, and going through training camp, is Cam Smith the guy that you thought he was walking in the door from Arizona State? Um, actually, he's a little bit different than what I thought. I, I thought he was more of a, you know, take the top off the coverage kind of guy, speed. Uh, but he's got strong hands. Uh, he uh, physically, uh, as you have seen his um, physique, he's very strong. Um, and, and he's got a mature presence about himself. Um, so he's exceeded my expectations uh, from that standpoint. And, and we put a lot of volume on him as well. He has tapped out as, you know, from a volume standpoint, our highest on GPS numbers. And he's been able to um, maintain that with, with uh, you know, the, the miles per hour. You know, we, we look at, you know, two, two factors. You know, the load that, that the player goes through during the practice and then his max velocity. And he's able to maintain that max velocity, which tells us that, you know, he's in a good position uh, relative to his um, his injuries. He's he's not had any reoccurrence um, from those that have slowed him down. That's what I was going to ask you. I know that he's learned a lot about his body from yeah. his actual major, but I'm wondering with the stuff that. Uh, Baloo and Bayless do if you've been able to help him with some of that kind of stuff? I, I think there's, uh, first of all, as you said, Eric, he's very in tune to his own body. And uh, come on in, coach. He is scattered right now. That's one of our new analysts. Wow. He's on fire right now. Um, he, he's so in tune with his own body. And he's in the training room, he's asking questions. Um, obviously, he's doing this very intentionally in terms of you know coming here. So he wants to be ahead of everything, and um, he's done a great job of um, working with our strength staff, nutritionists, and you know certainly uh, Rob Hunt um, to put himself in the best position he can be. The other day, you were mentioning that a lot of the receivers are it's still pretty fluid. Yeah. Um, is he somebody who is kind of more solidifying um, a spot there for you? He. I would say that he's been, um, outside of Equinemius, he's been the second most consistent wide receiver. So he would be number two on the list. Uh, if EQ, as I think I said earlier, has got a ticket on the train, um, he's getting close to punching his. Um, he's been very consistent. We're looking for that now. We're looking for the consistency. Come on, plants. These guys are right. They're, they're, they're funny. Um, he, he's been consistent, and that's really what has started to separate him uh, from the other receivers. Like consistency that, that he just keeps the every day you know, know what you're going to get. You're getting the same guy from him every single day. Where the other guys, part of it's not their fault. We've been moving them around trying to find where their best fit is. So, so it's not that they're necessarily um, less consistent as much as they're trying to gain consistency at a particular position. Coach, what has the last couple of days been like for you and the team inside the new locker room, showing them that, and then full practice and pads in the in the newly renovated stadium? What's that been like? I think it's gone from exciting uh, to uh, distracting, uh, and not in a bad way, uh, but in a way that requires our team to focus, um, lock in. You, you know, you start to run your offense down to that scoreboard and that big screen. It, it, it is imposing in a sense that it can distract you if you're not really locked in. It really forces you to focus and, and lock in. Um, and that's a different dynamic in that stadium. Uh, so I thought it was great to be in there today, give them a chance to scrimmage with, um, you know, kind of, um, you, you know, th those things that can tend to distract uh, players at times. And it, it's going to be a great atmosphere for our guys that they're really going to enjoy it. Uh, but it's going to require them that once it's, you know, kind of seeps in and, and they take in the atmosphere, that it's going to require them to really have a laser focus. Brown, you talked about Jay Hayes the other day. I asked about him. I mean, just what do you anticipate from him this year now in his Role. Physicality is the first thing that, if, if I was to use one word, 
he's been extremely physical at the point of attack um, and assignment correct. Um, he, he doesn't come in and make errors. He's, he does his job. He's a great story. He's one that, um, when you look at it, he's had to wait for his opportunity. He's had some ups and downs along the way, and uh, he's had to be gritty. You know, um, came in heralded, you know, uh, as as a recruit, and some things didn't go his way, and he's had to fight through it. So, he's a great testament to some of our younger players about hanging in there, and uh, he's in a great place right now. You know, mentally, physically, he's in great shape. He's worked hard in the weight room to eliminate some, um, you know, some of the things that that um, held him back a little bit uh, physically. Um, but physicality, assignment, uh, correct, and, um, you know, he comes with a, a great attitude every day. Personality-wise, what's he bring to the equation? Um, well, he's, first of all, if you had Rob Hunt, you know, he just soon put a bed in the training room because, and it's not that he's nicked up, he just loves being around the guys. Um, he's a jokester. Um, big, big personality, big smile. He's a half full guy, not a half empty guy. Um, and we're just feeding off his personality right now. I love it. I love it. It's good, good, good to have around. Brian, yeah. right, so much you know, focused on the Quentin Nelson, Michael Glitchy, tandem on the left side. You have a couple of other seniors that you have mentioned quite often. You've put Sam Mustafer in that. You know, top group there, and, but what about also with Alex Bars and just the move he's made to guard and his overall progress with Sam in unison with the other two? Uh, Alex Bars arguably is has as good a camp as anybody that we've had. Um, you know, I, I think you know Trevor Rulin's had a really good camp, and I think if you ask Harry, you know how he. Rulin's graded out really well, which was important for us to have backup center. But Alex Bars, in terms of transforming his body in the off season, you know, losing 10, 12 pounds and gaining explosiveness, uh, has has really put himself in a position to be um, an elite player. Uh, he moves well. He's smart. Um, has multi-position ability. Can play tackle, guard, or center. Um, smart, tough, athletic, really good football player. As he continued the progress that where you pretty much put them in the same category as Nelson. Yeah, yeah. well, uh, you know, again, Sam not only has the experience but has the knowledge to, you know, put a lot of the protection checks and things that, you know, centers are required to do, uh, especially with a a younger quarterback, Sam has taken a lot of that responsibility on his shoulders. But here, too, is a guy that is physically fit and stronger. We ran 73 plays today. I told our team, you know, we're not ready to play today. You know, we've got three weeks left. But, you know, if we're looking at some things that we did really well today, we played 76 plays, and we didn't have one guy that I felt was not physically conditioned to keep going today. Um, there was not. Um, a drop off from play one to play 76 with a conditioning element. Um, and Sam was one of those guys that at times conditioning, um, you know, you worried a little bit about him at times. There's no worry about that with him at all. One guy we don't hear much from it, even though he's been in the lineup quite a bit, it's been Jonathan Meyer. Yeah. That, what, what has his uh, development yeah. been? He's just so much more agile, moves, moves so much better. Um, you know, a bit mechanical last year in a sense that um, wasn't as comfortable with the position. He's so much more comfortable with the position that he's playing. And again, I know I keep reverting back to this, but uh, correctives in, in his weight training and his conditioning has allowed him to be much more athletic in his movements. Um, and he, he's had a really good camp as well. Does the defensive line in particular have a, a chip on their shoulders just based on, you know, what everyone says that they're a weak link and everything like that? You know, I think they're human. You know, they listen to it as well. But um, I think there's a few factors there in that there's some new players that are getting an opportunity to, 
to get out on the field, and that's Hayes and Hayes. I think that um, there's a new defensive line coach who does a great job with them, and Mike Elston. Um, and then I think that there's a stronger unit and physically fit and stronger. And I, I think they have all those things going for them. And maybe the last thing is there's maybe a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. But I don't think that that's the first thing that they think of. I think their confidence has grown from their off-season training. I think their confidence has grown is that there's a new group of guys in there. And so a new, new blood, if you will. And then the final thing is they really trust their coaching. Webster, just what was that moment yeah. like Thursday? It was pretty exciting. You know, he, he's earned it as, as a captain, but, you know, he's on two of our running teams, too, and special teams. He's earned that. And Coach Polian's not giving out um, memberships to the special teams club because, you know, you're a nice guy. You've got to earn them. And for him to get on two of those teams says a lot about uh, the production that he's going to be able to give us. And so it was only fitting for him to be awarded a scholarship. Captain, was that kind of obvious that he was going to get a scholarship? And how did you make no, sure I, it was I, a secret, I guess? No, I mean, I, I will be honest with you. He was not, um, when we came into camp, he was not on the list to get one. Um, he earned it. Now, somebody was going to earn one because we were below our numbers. Uh, and there were a number of guys that were on that list. Um, and he was on the list, but he wasn't guaranteed one. He had to go earn it, and he earned it. And you mentioned, you know, today being a positive distraction with video board. You know, just looking ahead to next Sunday when you have fans there as well. Yeah. Um, what would? How much more can that add to that? Yeah, I, I, we're we're going to treat it as a game. We're going to go in the locker room. You know, we're going to try try to make it as much like a game situation, um, and and create that so it's not the first time we do it in all respects. So, uh, I want to get that out of the way before we play Temple. Talk about so many seniors improving so much from the previous year. It's, it's usually the juniors, the guys that start getting more comfortable. Is it mostly attributable, do you think, to the new strength conditioning where from Betty, Jay Hayes, Sam Lester for Barr, there's a lot of guys that seem like are coming to their own in their fourth year? No, I mean, I think, I think under you know, the programs that I've uh, led, you know, we've had development you know, throughout their time. I, I don't know that the seniors have necessarily tapered off. They've continued to grow. Um, there certainly has been more growth this year. Um, and, and I think that there's fuel for that as well based upon you know, what happened last year. So certainly both of those things coming together the fuel for um, that desire to to want to eradicate um, last year, and certainly uh, the, the the strength and conditioning, and and those guys really being in a, a very positive environment. You know, creating the you know part of my job is to create the atmosphere for them to grow as well. You know, you 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 can have the best strength and conditioning coach in the country, but if it's not the right environment for them to grow and feel confident that they can get better, um, uh, once they step outside that weight room, then, you, you know, you, you, may, you may not have the kind of net results that you want. So it's all of those factors coming together. Is the environment a little for the older players as well? I mean, kind of tailored to them where this is, you know, it's their last go around and you Intent or not, last year as, as part of the motivation. No, I, I think the, the whole culture was shifted that I had to get it back on the right axis. Um, so it, it, it encompassed everybody that was in the program, not just the seniors. I just saw um, last week there was an interview with the UCLA quarterback. He was talking about balancing football in school. I, 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 didn't, see some, I, I didn't see the whole, I saw um, something in the newspaper about that. Context to it, but he was talking about football and school not necessarily going together. But my point here is, I was wondering how how you have noticed uh, some of your players, especially guys like Sam and Drew, who have very challenging majors, and how they kind of handle you know doing well in, in school and in football. Well, it's hard. There's no question about it. But they know it's hard when they come here, and we make no mistake about it when we recruit players to Notre Dame that it's hard. But the, the rewards are great. So if you know that the rewards are great, then coming to Notre Dame is, is well worth that investment 
in, in football and, and academics. So we're pretty transparent about who we are when, when, when you come to Notre Dame. So it's implicit that they know it's going to be a difficult challenge when they come here. And, um, you know, we were the number one football team in the country in 2012, and we had the number one graduation rates. So, you know, that wasn't, you know, BC. That was, <laughs> that was AD. So, you know, it, it happened a few years ago. It can happen, and you can continue to do that. So, and we'll continue to work towards that. That's our mission. That's our goal. Can you talk to your guys about their majors? Some of them seems like they have. Yeah, I mean, I, I think part of our conversations, you know, when we're with our guys is that, you know, we're inquisitive about, you know, what they're doing outside, you know, whether it's in the quarterback meeting room or any of the meeting rooms, we're inquisitive about what their interests are. A lot of that happens when we find out what their internships are and have conversations in, in that regard, you know. Um, I don't know that we have a particular conversation in their first or second year because they're still sorting it out a little bit in freshman studies, but it's mostly with the older guys, like, hey, you know, what internship do you have? You know, what are you thinking about going into? That's generally where we have those conversations. How would you assess special teams at this point, and is there a chance Michael Young's going to fit in there somewhere in the return game? I, I think Michael Young's right in the thick of it. I don't know that we've made a decision on the returners per se. I know that we're still in the gong show uh, category, if you will. We brought that up the other day. Our guys had no idea what the gong show was. They brought it back, or did they it? Yeah, I saw that. I saw it. I was a big fan of uh, the gentleman who just passed away who created it. But um, and anyway, um, so we're still in the mix right now. But he is he has really put himself in a position to compete for it. Um, we're really, we've been really focused, um, and, and Brian's done a terrific job of breaking down our special teams into the fundamentals and the technique work, which we were, you know, our inconsistencies were similar to everything else that was inconsistent, it was the, the lack of attention to detail. And our detail has been one that we spend most of our time with right now. So to ask me about like the whole units, um, we went live today a little bit, um, got some really good action today in the scrimmage. Um, and it's coming together nicely, but t to say who those guys are right now, it's, it's a little bit early. Right. Just in terms of Mike Elko's defense, from a small picture perspective, just guys knowing where they need to be and not turning guys loose, how would you evaluate where you are for a week and a half? Well, I think we're really in, in a good position. We, we, we had a, a situation yesterday in two minutes where we cut our best receiver loose because we put we put in a new coverage that's really installed in a short field and so we had a safety that you know was was lurking like he was in a short field but we were actually in a big field and we should have been doubling them so we're still going through the installation phase on a number of things but in terms of the understanding of the defense in terms of understanding how this defense will function we're in a really good position. Um, you can see it every day. Um, we're gonna, we gotta get you down at the line of scrimmage. We gotta tackle really well. If we tackle well, we're gonna disrupt the football much better than we have in the past. Um, but it's gonna come down to the fundamentals of football, defensive football. We're gonna have to tackle really well. Uh, but I think that in answer to your question, our guys really are tuned into the specifics of how to run this defense. Well, I, I would say that, you know, anytime we install something, we're, we're not going to get it the first day. It's going to take a little bit. And yesterday was a little bit of that where we had some red zone and then we try to transition into two minute and our guys played the coverages like we were in the red zone. We were actually on the 35 yard line. So um, and that's kind of normal in a sense that you got to see that and feel it. But big picture. Um, really like the way we play the fundamentals of the defense and we'll, we'll only get better. You talked to some players last week about maybe the players taking some ownership of leadership off the shoulders of the coaching staff. It felt like that may happen at some point, not really sure when, uh, that this may be a time for you and staff to almost over communicate everything, to make sure it's really nailed down. Do you see a time where the players maybe take some of that off of your shoulders or is that with all the new stuff, it's not realistic.
No, it's it's the ultimate goal of what we want to accomplish is that, you know, when it's their team and they take full ownership in it, um, that's when really cool stuff happens. Tonight would be a great idea for them to take ownership, right? They're on campus. Um, they have tomorrow off. Um, maybe that had a lot to do with my conversation with the team. You know, here's a great opportunity to show me that, you know, you guys are accountable and responsible and, and um, you can take great ownership and take great strides towards this being your team and uh, how you handle yourself. Um, off campus is off campus, on campus is on campus. Eddy Street is not off campus. It is off campus. They thought it was, you know. Let's not get confused. Things like that. So, yes, tonight would be a good idea. When he was elected captain in December, I mean, when he was, he was not yet on scholarship. What did you see that led to that election? That was a unique Well, keep, keep in mind now, we have, you know, we have a strong representation within our football program of 20 plus walk-ons who have a vet, vested interest in, in what goes on in this football program. And they're passionate about Notre Dame, they love Notre Dame, they sacrifice for our football program. And um, he was a great representative of all those players and even touched scholarship players with the right traits that I was looking for, that I wanted to model. So not only did we have a guy that that was sacrificing for Notre Dame in all those areas. He also possessed the traits that I wanted to mirror right out of the gates. So it made for an easy choice for me for captain. Justin Yoon, we didn't see him in the spring. Um, is the plan right. still to divide it up into kickoff, uh, separately kickoff punts and three? Three guys right now is the, if we were to go and say what's the ideal situation today, I would tell you that we would ideally like to have one field goal kicker, one guy to kick off, and one guy to punt. That would be the ideal situation. I think all three of them kicked off what that we saw there. Is there a leader there at that point? Um, the, yeah, the freshman. What's his name again? John, you guys are on it. You guys have been looking at the roster. Congratulations. Jonathan Dorr, yes. Through these 11 practices. He's, he's, got, got, he's got, got a real, real strong leg. Um, I like his mental approach to the game. Um, Brian is, has been impressed with him as well. We, we like all three of our guys, um, but we, we didn't want to put any dual responsibility on anybody at this point. We wanted them to go take that, that, the specialty, if you will, of that particular position and go take that one and be consistent at that one. If there's anyone that, you know, uh, kicks at another position, it will be because they've mastered one and, and you know, somebody hasn't mastered their own. Brian, right. speaking of freshmen, uh, Cole Komet, you mentioned he had strung yeah. together some look pretty strong in red zone today. Realistically, do you feel like he's going to be heavy in the mix for you, maybe, if he keeps coming? Well. Yeah. I mean, we're playing him right now and, and repping him as if he's going to play in three weeks. You know, but three weeks is three weeks away. Maybe he hits a wall and, and forgets everything um, and thinks of, you know, the St. Fire to playbook is the Notre Dame playbook next week. That could happen. I've seen it happen. But the way he's competing right now, he's competing as it's not too big for him um, and, and he's ready to play. So we're going to keep... Um, working to get him ready and with the expectations, uh, you know, we should have Alizé back. He should be cleared for some individual work on Monday, you know, getting him back into seven on seven probably Tuesday, Wednesday, and we'll have a full, full complement of tight ends by the, the middle of next week and we'll see where it goes. All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks everybody.